Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to this session. We'll be presenting on digitization and big data. In this session, we hope to take you through, like Raf mentioned, there's a scenario, a scenario today where digitization and big data exist. Truly or not, let us see. This scenario will present you with many opportunities. We'll also show you what kind of impact will those opportunities have on your business and possibly the industry. And last but not the least, what are the challenges and enablers for digitization and big data? I hope this afternoon, most of you, when you made it here, managed to update your Facebook or LinkedIn status, saying, attending Navigating the Future conference at IMD. If you did, this is exactly the prevalence of social media, an increasing one by the day, the use of mobile devices, and of smart sensors that is causing an exponential burst in the amount of data being generated. Big data has also been in the news for a variety of reasons. When you have established players like Apple, who stand up and say, we'll only sell our products, but not our customer data. On the other hand, you have new entrants like Uber, who managed to reshape the entire taxi business industry by using big data analytics. Is this early increase in adoption of big data, interest shown by the industry, that's moving big data from being a hype to a reality. The next question that we would have is what is big data? Big data lies at the intersection of data being generated by traditional computing devices, data generated on the cloud by enterprise networking systems, and data generated by smart sensors. There's no doubt that there lies an opportunity to leverage the information synthesized by collecting vast amounts of structured and unstructured data and thus, it's no surprise that big promises are being made to those who are willing to embrace big data. With this opportunity present in front of you, the million dollar question is, will your industry benefit or your company benefit from using big data? And more importantly, at which end of the spectrum are you? Would you like to be at the end of the cost spectrum? Gain competitive advantage to, to improving operational efficiencies? Or would you want to, like most others, increase your revenue by providing a better, more personalized customer experience through better segmentation and targeting. In order to do either, you need a huge customer database or you need plenty of data points per customer. It would then be wise to see that if big data brings across so many opportunities, it also brings across many threats. Thus, let me take you through, in a simple four-step model, the what would a disruptive technology like big data and how would it impact your company and possibly even your industry? In the first step, big data would allow you to optimize your business processes. To many a level, depending on how well you're organized, it may even allow you to improve functional efficiencies. In the second step, big data allows you to reconfigure your business system by eliminating redundancies. And if you're really well channeled and well connected again, then you can relook at your business model. Prepare yourself for a better future. In the third step, big data would allow you to partner with your business partners to leverage this technological shift. All to do is in the fourth step, it would allow you to set the new global standard through the network effect. The network effect, as we know it, is when you have more users, more customers for your product and service, the lower the cost, the greater the value generated. Let me walk you through a case study, a business case, to see the impact of big data. MSKCC, or Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, partnered with IBM to use Watson. Watson is a com cognitive computing system. They use Watson to enable better decision making and to reduce treatment cost. How did they do this? MSKCC like, is a healthcare provider. And like most healthcare providers, is faced with increasing pressures to reduce healthcare treatment cost and improve treatment outcomes. However, its clinicians face the challenge, the challenge being to keep themselves constantly updated with the latest advances in medical literature. So MSKCC trained Watson to use latest medical literature, patient records, clinical trials, and treatment guidelines to come up with confidence-rated treatment recommendations. This led to better treatment outcomes for patients 
and also resulted in a 60% reduction in nurse management cost. So what would the future be for MSKCC with Watson, whose cognitive computing capabilities could prove a game changer for the entire healthcare industry? Let's look at it again to the four-step model we just discussed. MSKCC and IBM have created a system which is transparent, free of subjective elements, and of unconscious biases that clinicians may face when deciding on what treatment mode to take for a patient. That's the first step that Watson has managed to accomplish. In the second step that Watson is ready for today, along with MSKCC, Watson can go proactive. It can identify patients who are prone to getting cancer based on genetic predispositions or pre-existing conditions. As a team, we synthesize and we believe that in the third step, MSKCC today has the advantage that it can reshape payer and pharma business systems. This comes through Watson. However, the cost for this is also that some of Watson's treatment recommendations may prove too costly for insurance companies to build through, subsequently forcing them to move to a result-oriented payment mode. The bigger question then is that if they manage to get to the fourth step, MSKCC along with Watson can set the new global standard for oncology treatment, again through network domination. However, will the regulatory authorities allow this? And who will take responsibility or who will be accountable for privacy and transparency issues? I'll let my colleague Alvin answer that for you. Thank you, Vishal. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, so the promises are big. Michal just explained you. Better decision making, financial benefits from big data, from digitization. So a lot of promises. But haven't we seen this before? In the early 2000s, late 90s, there was something called the new economy. And everybody was talking about internet, hardware. Hardware was getting better cheaper, faster, and especially software. For the first time, we were able to at least partially replace human intelligence with software. And the expectations were huge. We could see that on the stock market, and in the end, it led to the burst of the dot-com bubble. The challenges at that point of time were the transformation readiness, so the exit barriers of the big players were very high. There were no proven business models at that point of time. There were no players actually, at that point of time, really using business models based on the internet, based on software that create great profits. Everybody was just going for growth. There was lack of clarity. During the new economy, techies were talking to techies. They didn't show, there was nobody talking actually to the CEOs, to the business leaders, explaining the true value and the business value of these technologies. The power of the consumer was at that point of time also much lower than now. It was much more a push economy than a pull economy. And finally, regulations were not clear. It was not clear what does it mean if you have now a new business model based on internet, based on e-commerce, etc. So these were the reasons why the new economy was finally not really a revolution but more an evolution. So everybody started using it, but hardly anybody climbed actually the fourth step in the four-step model that my colleague just explained before. Today, we're in a similar situation. Everybody is talking about the digital economy, about big data. The technology has changed, has evolved. Now we're talking about hyper-connectivity. Everybody is online at every point of time with a lot of devices, smart things, everything is connected. Lower cost of data processing, faster data processing. It is possible to process millions and millions data points in milliseconds. And major business networks. Everything is connected, not just within your company, but also across companies. So the technology is there. The challenges are similar. So will it be the same like last time? A lot of talk, a lot of hype, but actually not, mu not that much happening. We believe, we believe this time it's going to be different. And this is important for you, because this time the companies, the big players, are actually ready. Because there are new players on the market. There are new players who actually have profitable business models without fixed assets, just based on digital 
uh, technology. And the incumbents, so the existing, the big players, are actually ready to think about the exit barriers and how to exit their current business models. Second of all, lack of clarity. Consultancies and also especially their big IT companies, whether it is IBM, Cisco, Oracle, SAP, the big IT companies have learned to actually talk to the business and translate technology to business value and to productivity. And the consumer power has increased as well. Consumers have become more demanding and consumers can actually ask for new business models actively. So from this point of view, it looks like there's going to be really a big change. But there's one other point which was also unclear during the new economy. It is regulation. And again, with regulation, we are somewhere between limiting and enabling the digital economy and the use of big data. We are somewhere between harnessing the power of big data and protecting the privacy of people. So even if you as a business leader have a great digital strategy and if you have a great idea how to harness the power of data, and to how to harness all the digital economy. You might be dependent on regulation and policymakers, because it's going to be important to ask the questions, who will set the standard? In which countries will the standard be set? Will it be set by countries? Will it be set by organizations, by companies? And am I going to have a competitive advantage or disadvantage if I'm in a certain location with my company? So what does that mean for you as a business leader? You will have to look at your business model. Industries, markets, segments are changing. The borders between them are getting more and more blurry. Competitors, which had nothing to do with your industry, are coming in. Look, for example, a few months ago, Google announced that they're entering the telecommunication industry in the United States. They can reshape the industry much more than any other player has done before. You will need new skills, much more focus on data, much more focus on understanding the big picture and how you can use the data that you generate and collect and to protect your data. Coordination is becoming more and more important. As mentioned before, there are major business networks now. So you have to make sure to coordinate horizontally and vertically to make sure to not miss an important standard and maybe to protect yourself together with other industry players against the new standard in your industry. From company organization perspective, it will be important to become more agile. Even the big companies, changes are coming more drastic and faster. From margin potential perspective, big data has also the goal to create transparency. But if you become transparent yourself, you could lose your profit pools. So you have to think, what other profit pools can you use? Or how can you protect your existing profit pools? So where to start? You should start by asking the right questions. You should ask the right questions on corporate level, on business unit level, and also on operational level or shared services level. Let's start at the bottom, and these are just a few of the questions that you should ask yourself. So first of all, referring back to the four-step model, you should try to climb the first two steps by using the new possibilities with the digital economy. So you should, first of all, maybe not be afraid of the new Ubers and Amazons and Airbnbs of your industry, but focus on how can you optimize and simplify your business model that is currently there. In the second step, you look at business unit level, and there you especially focus on your customers. Is there a business model that would benefit my customers more than it does today? Think about Barnes & Noble, what they could have done before Amazon. They had all capabilities if they would have been ready to exit their current business model at that point of time. And eventually, on corporate level, you have to ask yourself the question, in my industry, is digitization and big data going to be an evolution or a revolution? 
And if this, I would like to open the questions. Thank you.